Welcome. Welcome to the autistic delicatessen. What you eat, what you drink, is your story. The autistic delicatessen. Let me tell you something. The food is great. Great, 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 great. What you eat, what you drink, is your story. The autistic delicatessen. Welcome to the autistic delicatessen. I'm Monique Agi, and this is Lornell. <laughs> and this is episode two of the video series we are providing on YouTube. <laughs> Today we are both wearing red. Why are we wearing red? It's actually Autism Acceptance Month, although personally I'm aiming for appreciation. So red instead, appreciate all the autistic people out there, except for who they are, and that's why we're both wearing red. And since we're both also on the spectrum, we feel like we should promote that in our own way even if it's just wearing red. So, yeah, <laughs> autism acceptance. And also to our allies, um, know that um, it's good to also wear red, you know, in solidarity for the visibility of autistic people like us. You know, like you can stand with us, wear red, and be able to do that, you know, as well as ones that don't know about the red, but just understand that it's basically about showing autistic people that we're human beings. Like no matter where you are on the spectrum, it's like we're all human beings and we're all visible. And really that's what it is. You know, it's all about showing that we are all here and we are all who we are. Today's guest is Dylan Maurer, an MC, DJ and chef from Jacksonville, a hip hop staple in Atlanta for over a decade, working with many rap legends and has also collaborated with Bat Sauce, with the album Self Medicated. Dylan likes to mix food and rapping, literally, with one performance involving rapping while making a panini and sharing it with the audience afterwards, creating audience participation into another level. He also has a pop-up event called Plates and Crates, which combines food and music together. But we will let Dylan explain more on that later on. Variety is the spice of life, she said, and I want to try it all on my own. There ain't a man who can hold me down I done been around the world and I'm never coming home So if you trying to say that you got flavor To me that don't really mean much What? I said you ain't got to worry about me misbehaving If we go on a date, we going Dutch yep. We going Dutch We going Dutch We can both throw half when we go out to lunch Let's go Dutch Let's go Dutch uh -huh. Just playing I'll pay Right And now for today's guest, Dylan Welcome to the Autistic Delicatessen What's up? Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. I'm already hungry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> First question is, what made you incorporate food with wrapping? I had run out of all other ideas. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> food has always been like a major part of my life, like a hobby, um, before music, you know, my mom was, a, was an excellent home cook and had like a little soup restaurant. Um, her mom had a little restaurant. Um, so I've always been around food and, and people who can cook it well. So it's just kind of something that I've carried with me. I guess where it really happened, though, where the two came together was when I was in college at the University of Florida. Um, I stumbled into a position as becoming a hibachi chef. You know the oh. hibachi chef where they cook on the grill in front Yay. of you? Oh, oh, okay. Those, those right, guys, right. I. <laughs> wow, yeah. okay. Interesting. It was a weird time in my life. I was like 18 years old, and I somehow became like a full-time. I was cooking like six nights a week as a hibachi chef through college. And that's also when I started rapping and performing at the same time. So there would be times when while I was cooking – because I was in there, I was literally there six nights a week. I would rap and cook at the table and like make beats with the little fork and spatula and like rap and cook at the table. And so, so that was like my very my first foray into, I guess, performing while incorporating food. And, and it just came from the jobs I was working and and then vice versa. When I would start to do performances, I started to bring food out into my rap shows just because. I had always brought rap into my food world, so that's that's how it started. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Dylan, um, there's like another mixtape that you had out recently called Lobster Domus or something. Yeah, the Lobster Domus character. Um, that's it's a good friend of mine. He's 
he's an alter ego, but he's his own man. Um, he lives at the bottom of the sea, and he hates everything. <laughs> That's why I love him. Um, but yeah, the Lobster Damas album came out last summer, and that was like a, that was a project that I produced myself. And the first time I'd ever done that. And it's kind of like my angry alter ego. It's like a, it's a breakup record. But <laughs> <So, laughs> it is. I became, you know, Lobster Damas was born. So, wow. yeah. So ironically enough, that, that isn't so much about the food as it is about the actual character of a lobster. <laughs> so I've transcended food. I'm going straight to the source. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, that's yeah, interesting. It's a, it's a fun listen. It's a weird one. <laughs> Even funner live. We'll see if you can find him live because when he sh when he shows up to my live shows, it's a bit of a ruckus. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> wow. Could you explain more on plates and crates? Yeah. Okay. So, um, long story long, I have a label. Um, an imprint called Full Plate and it's for music and, and our food events and, and, and stuff like that. It was kind of meant to be a little more than just a record label. But out of Full Plate um, came Plates and Crates which has always been my idea to have like a cafe slash record shop where you can dig for records and also snack on food. Um, but being that I don't have the, the assets right now to make that happen I just started a dinner party at my house with the same premise. Um, the plates represent the five. It's now grown into a five course. It's always been all vegan. Um, and now it's five courses. Fancy stuff. Like, I go hard, like, trying to really create, like, an over-the-top, like, vegan. I've always worked in fine dining, and I've always had jobs in nice restaurants. So I'm very familiar with fine dining and gourmet, high-class food from the blue-collar aspect of having served it, not necessarily uh, just because I'm fancy like that. So anyway, <laughs> I, I try to provide like a fine dining experience that I'm familiar with to apply that to like vegan cuisine, which is typically like, oh, you're going to get this soy crumbles or these, you know, here's some fake, you know, fake roast beef. It's not... It, just because something doesn't have meat in it doesn't make it good. You know what I mean? Just because something is vegan doesn't make it tasty or even healthy. So anyway, I, I've tried to apply that to the plates aspect of the dinner party. And then the crates aspect comes from the fact that I have three DJs always spinning all vinyl sets. And I also have record vendors, people selling records. So it's a place, you, it's a little pop-up record shop. So you can come dig for records, get your hands dirty, and, and while I'm providing a five-course vegan feast, as well as an open bar with fancy cocktails and all that jazz. So oh. Place of Crates is, is it's a dinner party. It's been growing by leaps and bounds. Shout out to Crown Royal. We got a nice little sponsorship from them. Um, so they're helping out with the beverage aspect of it. But it's at my house, and it's about 30 people each time, and it's about every six weeks. We're supposed to have one next week, but I'm going to have to postpone it due to all the madness in the world, you know? Yeah, that's Plates and Crates. That's my baby. Oh, wow. That's that's very interesting. And I'm oh, also I'm like... 18 of them so far. You did about how many again? 18. 18. Wow, 18 of them. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm one of the DJs that helps you along with that is DJ day tripper you know day tripper like will like yeah, some stuff. he's a dj too but he's also he's an mc um and in the regards to plates and crates he's my sous chef so oh. he become execute he's also he has vast kitchen experience and works in restaurants and also knows how to knows his way around the kitchen and knows how to deal with me when i'm huffy and puffy and hot and i'm like we need this out now and he's like okay <laughs> <laughs> you know so yeah, shout out to Day Tripper. That's my dude. And and before Day Tripper t took on that role, you know, um, Count Base D was my sous chef for many many places and greats. I don't know if you're familiar with Count Base D. Oh, I heard his stuff in the past. I was like, dang, he cooks. Yeah, huh. what's that? I say like, dang, he cooks. You know, like you know, because I've heard of Count Base D's stuff. He, he's really good. Yeah. 
Oh, he's yeah, he's a legend in his own right, and, and uh, so it was very cool to to have him join with me. We cooked many events together, and that blossomed into a long lasting friendship. He actually took me on tour with him the last time he went on a big tour a couple of years ago. So, what's up, Cal? That's my dude. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So yeah, look, plates and crates my thing, man. I can't wait to get back to it. I miss it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, it's just great to hear like something like that. Just making, even if it's just like a small community. It's just such an awesome concept, really. I just think it's really cool. <laughs> when I go out, I'm like so entrenched in like my hip hop lifestyle and friends, and you know, we know all. You know, it's like DJs and. A lot of the same people that we've been running with in Atlanta together for years and plates and crates cracks that wide open. Like you'll just it invites people from all walks of life and just different folks that that I wouldn't see out at the rap show or, you know, at, at, at my one of my DJ gigs or something. Just so it's an interesting crowd. And it's a that's why I appreciate it. Just kind of you, you have different types of artists and creatives all in the same room and doctors, lawyers, you know, non-creative folks who are just fans of music and just want to be around that type of environment. So it's cool to have, because the hip-hop circle, we all get around each other and we're all just like, ah, I hate you. you know, it's just like, <laughs> why, why are you performing and not me? And yada, yada, yada. It's like, so it's just like, wait, hey, back off, back off. We're just, we're all here. We're just eating food and listening to music. Chill. That, so that's, yeah. Hey. Totally. <laughs> yeah yeah so um i just want to know from you like um obviously like and with the whole COVID 19 crisis it's affected you know your event and all that stuff so how have you been dealing with things since then well not well <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm more or less out of work and uh we were a couple of weeks ago we had just started me and day tripper had just driven up to burlington vermont uh, only that's about, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, Burlington, Vermont is almost Canada. It's the very, very top of the country. It's, it's like, you're in Ireland. Where are you at in Ireland? Are you <laughs> in Ireland, honey? Oh, no, I'm actually from Scotland. <laughs> oh, Larnell, you told me not to mess that up. Yeah, oh, I told you, I told you. <laughs> hey, it could be worse. At least well, you didn't say play. England, so. <laughs> So basically, the distance from Atlanta to Burlington, Vermont, is like Scotland to freaking Paris, dude. Like it's a, it's like a seventeen-hour drive, a long drive. So as soon as we got drove all the way up there, literally all of our gigs got canceled. We had like a two-week tour, so we had to turn around and drive back. Mm -hmm. um, that was two weeks ago. So yeah, all my work has been canceled. All my DJ gigs are canceled. All my shows are canceled. Everything. Um, so I've, I've been writing, I've been recording, uh, been making music, and, and I dropped a new beat tape, and I've been just trying to stay positive and upbeat. I planted a garden, but I always plant a garden every year. I'm very big into gardening, but I, I uh, got a new bed, like a nice big raised bed. I'm nice. planting a whole lot of cabbage this year, red cabbage, Napa cabbage, green cabbage, going hard with the gardening that's been home for like three weeks but you know I, I never leave my house anyway really to work so it's not that much different there's just no money <laughs> yeah. i'm used to staying in the house as well to be fair that's basically yeah. what i do anyway um, yeah it's uh th that's the advantage of being stuck in one place is that you thrive more in your creative projects more or you find a new project like what you have it's just oh but speaking of creative projects, I um, I have watched your panini video. Um, you uh, <laughs> you rapping and making a panini. I just it's just so awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That that that's a gimmick I will never get rid of. Um, it's it's just a fun little thing. I think it says a lot about my personality, and uh, yeah, it's fun. I've been doing that. I've done that every show now for almost probably over five years at this point. So that's uh -huh. that's a lot of sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Free food. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, that's 
That's my gift. And it's not cheap. I buy the good cheap, good mm. stuff, you know, expensive cheese. I usually make my own pesto. Ooh, and nice. I get the good bread. Nothing nothing worse than bad bread. Mm. Oh, uh, no, you, oh, need, yeah. you need good you need good bread. Totally. <laughs> yes. bread. Start with the basics. Totally. Yeah. Wow, yes. So is usually the bread that you would make with the penny like whole wheats or something like that, or would it be a combination of different ones depending I, on the show? Depends on what I have. I keep a lot of good fresh local baked breads around, um, honestly, but typically sourdough mm. is kind of my go to because okay. I just that's my my personal favorite like grilling bread. I just I love sourdough. Mm. My 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 go to sandwich would be like a little bit of Munster cheese. Or uh, I like Dubliner as well, which is like a Irish cheddar, salty cheddar. A little bit of fresh pesto, a little bit of spinach leaves, and then sourdough pressed. Simple, easy. That's that's what I like to do. <laughs> that sounds like yeah. a good sandwich. <laughs> I try it. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, yeah, you should come to Scotland after this whole thing, and then, you know, oh, like, right. definitely she'll try some. Yeah. Scotch. Scotch makes me cry. <laughs> whiskey, not whiskey. Two shots in, and I'm just, I love you! <laughs> I'll just be like, oh, God. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think, like, um, also, like, um, on your Instagram page, you have so much food, you know? Like, that's how I first knew about your your stuff like you you have like just this past week you had some eggplant yeah the eggplant sandwich or some oh, yeah, type yeah. of egg we've been cooking a lot um been cooking a whole lot more more than usual just because we haven't left the house um but yeah i've, I've I, every meal to me is like a like a sacred rite <laughs> you know what i mean like it's the first thing I think about when I wake up. You know, I look over at my girl and be like, what are we eating today? You know what I mean? Like, we base our whole days around, like, the meals that we're going to have. So, yes, uh, cooking is my zen. I love it. And I love eating <laughs> more uh, than cooking. <laughs> for me, I love cooking. <laughs> oh, for me, it's I love I love, I love eating. I'm not much of a cook. Yeah. It's my partner that does the cooking, <laughs> and he <laughs> puts his creative zen as well. So, speaking of uh, music, I have listened to the self medicated EP, and I think it's great. Oh, um, and my favorite tracks are Pops, Pills, and the title track Self Medicated. What's What's considered your favorite song that you created from Self Medicated? Oh. Good question. Um, well, I really like Pops Pills um, because of, I guess, the message. That's a personal one for me. Um, it's 100% based in fact, uh, and I had to get that one off my chest. And then I think my, my other favorite one is Going Dutch. Ah. Because of the, I like the, I don't know, I feel like that's a complete song. Like from the hook and the concept, and and it's just from beginning to end. It's it's like a, it takes you on a little journey, and it wraps it up nice and succinctly. Like I'm a real big fan of like songwriting more than rapping. You know what I mean? Like rapping is the vehicle that I that I use to get my songs out, and I'll be singing a little bit too, but I, I can't. But I can hold it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, I, I feel like as far as songwriting, that's what I've been really trying to dive into as I've gotten older in in this, and just focus on writing good songs. So going Dutch to me is like a song that I'm just I'm glad I wrote it. That to me is a complete song, and I would play that for anybody. Check out the video too for it. Uh, we just put that out. I don't know if you caught that. It's there's a cool video we did for Going Dutch with a lot of food in it. <laughs> we went to like two of two of my favorite restaurants in Atlanta. We shot it there, and yeah, it was fun. Woo! <laughs> That's awesome. I'll make sure to promote it on this episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like that. I actually liked that song, you know. So that's a Going Dutch, and plus it it, it, it transcends into food, you know, because I've seen right. the video already. Already. Okay. Nice. So you get... Oh, of course, you know, like I'd you know, like I would say pops pills. And going Dutch is like, you know, 
one of like the tracks that I like, as well as some of the other ones and all that stuff. So I'm kind of different than my co-host right now. So it's like, <laughs> um, but but I like the whole food concept and all that stuff. And you mentioned about your girlfriend. So like, um, is your girlfriend also like a cook or a chef or something? Or yeah, she, she cooks- not professionally, but she. <laughs> Shout out to Janie. She likes to eat more than me. Um, <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> so I know I'm like her dream guy because I'll be the I'll be the one cooking it up. You know what I mean? And she can cook. She's Cambodian, so she has like a different set of skill set as far as cool. the cuisine. And her mom is an amazing cook. Her mom ah. is fantastic. So she grew up fairly spoiled because <laughs> her mom just cooks all the time all this great cambodian greatness um but yes we we get it in together cooking and shopping and she's as passionate if not more passionate about the food than i am for sure wow okay <laughs> yeah yeah because like i'm also too like um before we get to the last question um I saw your past youtube videos of doing eight that you used to have like a little series and all that stuff you know and also, of course, yeah. like you've also went out with Bat Sauce and his wife and all stuff, Daisy, you know, shout out to them too as well, you know. Yeah, what up, Bat and Daisy? Yes, because they were also responsible for the theme music and the music on our show, so that's another all thing. Right. Yeah. That's so that's so dope. That's cool. The connection is, that's awesome. So, like, just like I'm from that, you know, like, it's, it's funny. We all wearing the red and we all have that connection right there. But from that, <laughs> like, um, has there been any like interesting restaurants that you went with them, like you know, um, that had oh, interesting dude. dishes? Dude, dude. All right, <laughs> I'll try to make this as brief as possible. Um, we were in. I used they used they have a pad in Berlin, where they've ha- held for ten years, and they typically they used to stay there all the time, but now that they just spend the summer there because Berlin is mighty cold. It's like uh-huh. Russia. So anyway, I used to go out to Berlin and stay there for like two or three weeks for like three summers in a row. And we go work on music together and whatever, whatever. So one time I was out there, I believe it's the second time I was out there, and they got us a couple gigs. And we got flown out to Bulgaria. And we're in Sofia, which is the capital of Bulgaria. And didn't know this. It's like the capital of feta cheese. It's like a feta cheese... Bulgarian feta cheese is like top of the world. Did not know that. Um, we go to this restaurant. The the hosts and hostesses that flew us out were so cool, and they really wanted to like impress us. They were really like doing their best to like. They looked up to Bat and Daisy, right? So they took us to the flyest restaurant. To this day, I think that one of the top three restaurants I've ever been in my life. And it was it was an outdoor pavilion with like all these like Turkish like white tents. It was all like outdoors, and it was all in this giant lake. This giant lake, and then the fish they're serving you were f- caught from the lake. Wow! Oh wow! And bass and certain uh, other type of uh, local fish that that's from there. And they literally are catching the fish, and then, like, I can't even describe. I think there, there's Larnell. There's a video where I say Dylan ate Bulgaria. There's one of the, and I, I got a bunch of video from this meal. But like whole fish wrapped in lettuce and then covered in an egg and kosher salt. Wow. Hmm. To like create like a casing and then that was grilled. And then you like crack open the salt casing like the top of a creme brulee. And it's this perfectly steamed fish like caught from the lake with like feta cheese and like potato, like potatoes and like herbs and veggies. But it was like the illest spread. Like that I'd ever seen, and it was like twenty of us outside of this outdoor pavilion, crazy. So that was one, Bulgaria, and then the other one, or just I've been out to Vietnam and to Thailand with them, and to Cambodia with them, and just the meals we've had in Vietnam, like there are these seafood kiosks that are because where they stay in Da Nang is on the beach, oh. and you literally, the restaurants are just right along the street with like giant tanks it's almost like an aquarium you're like what is this it's just stuff for sale everything Uh fish like 11 different kinds of lobster stuff i would never seen in my life all kind of stuff and you just walk in off the street and pick what you want and the dude just scoops it out of the tank and weighs it and they're like okay you want the garlic or the butter 
go sit down. And then it just shows up. <laughs> just cook. You know what I mean? Like, whoa. whoa. Man, right. Yes. And, and dirt cheap. Like, like, you know, Vietnam is crazy to eat. We would have amazing, amazing meals when we drank our faces off. You know, and we each just throw in like 15, 20 bucks. And that's a fat tip already. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, love it. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, that was very interesting, though. Yeah. So, um, anyway, Dylan, like, we can spend all day trying to talk to you, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, but we gotta wrap this up, though, you know, but, um, anyway, Dylan, like, um, again, um, where should people get your self-medicated CD? How should you get it? Yeah, it's, um, so it's only out on vinyl, um, I haven't made a CD in a long time, The Lobster Domus is on CD, but, um, the music, all the music comes out through the label, full plate and you can check out we've got a bunch of physical merchandise vinyl shirt cds whatnot at full plate fam.com f-u-l-l-p-l-a-t-e-f-a-m.com full plate fam and then all the music's also on all the streaming platforms um apple music spotify title all that you can stream it from our Bandcamp page uh, all our stuff's on SoundCloud too, so we try to be everywhere for everybody, you know. Um, but yeah, and full play fam, and and that's the Instagram and the Twitter and the Facebook and all that. It's full plate fam. Yeah, <laughs> nice. And it's an honor to be here. Love oh, yeah. it. The autistic oh. delicatessen. I'm about to make a sandwich. I'm just gonna make a <laughs> with Philly. Wow, like a nice. It's gonna be vegan, or is it gonna be like regular Philly cheesesteak? Some cheese. I'll put some cheese on there, but it'll be all mushrooms. Yeah, a variety of mushrooms: shiitake, crimini, portobello, sautéed on a cast iron flat top. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't talk. Don't talk too much. You might get me and only hungry. I'm hungry, I'm hungry already. Hungry right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's already too late. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, thank you so much for being on the autistic dog testing. And again, like um, you know, just giving us great food as well as like some very good music right there. That's much love. It's my honor and pleasure. I appreciate y'all. I'm glad I popped up on your radar. You know, you guys are doing great work, and thank you for spreading the word, all this fabulous food and music and culture that you shine light on. Give yourself self-hug, self-quarantine. <laughs> 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 Well, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of The Autistic Delicatessen. If you want to know more about what me and Oni are doing, please go on to autisticdelicatessen.card.co. It's the one down at the bottom right there. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe for future content. And until next time... What you eat and what you drink is your story.